Okay, here we are, and it's that third hour on Mondays. You know what that means. It's uh, time to spend an hour with Yochi Shimatsu, one of the world's most uh, ferociously intelligent investigative research journalists, former editor of the Weekend Japan Times. Uh, he's an extraordinary man, an environmentalist. This, he never ceases to amaze me about the things he understands, his sources, his understanding of the big picture. Uh, he's a remarkable fellow, and I think you've come to know him through his writing, certainly his appearances on this program for over three years now. And he's standing by, I believe, in Thailand. Are you there, Yochi? Yes, I am, and uh, thank you for that um, introduction. I'm not sure I deserve it. I actually do a lot of stumbling, make a lot of mistakes. That's a double that's how That, that makes do. you human, my you friend, know. and that's how we all learn. And that's, yeah, well... And that's what science is about, the process of trial and error. Absolutely. You can have a hypothesis, but it's got to span the test of, you know, discoveries, of research, of findings. Yeah. And so your original ideas of, you know, uh, that you might suggest as a code to teacher get changed. Usually something a lot more complicated, much more interesting, and the final analysis more elegant. And all the pieces and all the pieces fit together. So that's right. sort of the great joy of pursuing science, and unfortunately, really terribly, uh, disgracefully, I believe that most of the world's scientific establishment has fallen away from that just basic, very basic methodologies of science. You know? Well, I agree. Uh, science, science is based on doubt. You doubt yeah. yourself. You put out a theory, but you have to have doubt about your own theory. You have to be willing to overturn it. But since the age of uh, Einstein's relativity, everyone seems to be more involved you know, since then, in creating these major theories, you know, rather than getting out in the field and looking for the hard facts, looking for the facts that will overturn your own theories. This is what it's all about. Well, it was that way. In our recent recent investigation, Malaysia Airlines, we wish some facts would come out to overturn that, well, we suggested, right? Uh, Of a hijack. Absolutely. uh, And uh, industrial theft. I mean, I wish... That could be overturned. It would make life a lot easier for the families of the passengers and all that. But despite our fondest wishes for that to happen, we still haven't found the fact, that the single fact that overturned that. So this no. is the problem. The theory still holds until that fact is found. So I wish... Uh, so when yeah. we talk to you... Hmm? Yes. I wish Go we ahead. could get Sarah Vajic on the program. Uh, I'd love to talk to her. Uh, she's uh, obviously, as we discussed last time... A very angry woman yeah. because uh, she she knows a lot and uh, she's held back admirably. She just, she just came out with a, I think she came out with another statement yesterday saying that this attempt to uh, issue death certificates for the passengers that there's absolutely no proof that they're dead, you know, and that it's uh, she just came out. I believe recently I saw something in an Australian paper about that. Yeah. So yeah. she continues yeah. to fight. I'd like to find her. But unfortunately, I don't at this point have the time or resources to get up to Beijing and, you know, uh, seek her out. If she's still there, she might be back. Who knows where she is now? Yeah, well, she's. So anyway, uh, it's true probably... that she, she has been a very courageous person to break ranks because she is very much embedded in the whole U.S. commercial, you know, uh, well, you know, intelligence is the word, but let's say commercial strategy. America has obviously a foreign. You know, a strategy to increase foreign trade, which it has to do, you have to balance for the balance of payments. Mm-hmm. And she's one of those people, uh, business executives, active out there, very trying to drum up, you know, uh, business and support for American suppliers and all that. So she, she's overall, you know, I mean, doing a knockout job, and she came out very honestly for someone who's inside the system to come out that forthrightly. But we don't have a single scientist really of major standing. Especially in the United States. No, I haven't seen. I haven't seen any. Exactly. Yeah, here's one brave woman who's really ready to go up against everything uh, she's been, you know, educated in or uh, thought into, and you know, worked for, and she's come out to, uh, you know, say the claim was taken, and uh, that her uh, husband to be was aboard and treated very badly, and uh, by these uh, unknown military personnel, uh, you know, as a, you know, based on his call from uh, Diego Garcia. So, so Here's she's still a, very strong. And uh, yeah. we, have the, well, we have the whole world at stake, not just a couple hundred passengers on an airliner. We're talking about all of humanity, all of life on Earth at stake. 
we can't find a single scientist that has half of Sarah Bajak's guts and honesty. We can't I, find a single one. And you well know, right said. now, yeah. our problem is that just as last week, there's been a major offensive by, uh, you know, uh, scientists who've been fi- uh, financed by NOAA, the uh, uh, American Meteorological Agency, yeah. uh, by NASA, uh, MIT, Utah University, to uh, very prematurely, based on scant evidence, come out and attack what you've been pointing out about the California, what they call the California drought, the whole West Coast drought that occurred this winter you know, for months. You know, the standing waves in the Pacific Ocean, the diagonal standing waves, the straight line waves in the Pacific Ocean. Now a major cover-up has come up, and you have to wonder, taxpayers have to wonder, if you're going to pay for a lot, why bother hire an expensive scientist? Just get some, you know, low-end sub-editor at some wire service to crank out lies. It's a lot cheaper and more effective. Yeah. Plus, he knows how to uh, frame a lie more effectively. So it's not, you know, these, and there's another also paper that you got to understand on the Arctic ozone layer where MIT scientists are saying, oh, it's not such a serious problem. It's not such a big problem. On the other hand, it opened up massively in March uh, 2011. March 2011 is when this ozone hole opened up. It's not a bad ozone hole over the Arctic. This thing that, well, it's explainable by CFCs, even though CFCs are now banned. <laughs> In other words, there's a declining amount uh-huh. of CFCs to be yeah. produced, being emitted, and yet they're saying the CFCs caused all of a sudden 2011, uh, uh, March, March 2011, the ozone hole. So these two studies are very much interrelated. Uh, scientific, or I say pseudo scientific denial of the uh, climate impact of the Fukushima radiation releases. Those massive plumes of radiation that you saw. You put, you you published maps and all that. Fast purple clouds overwhelming the U.S. West Coast, Canada. Well, when I, you know, I I began this uh, yeah. this last winter after you had so eloquently laid out. The, the reasons why the climate was being impacted, something else happened. And, and what we saw, and for those of you who didn't pay attention, was all the North Pacific weather systems that come roaring out of Kamchatka and, the, and Japan, uh, move across the Pacific, slam into the West Coast from Baja all the way up to Canada, move into the Cascades, the Sierras, and then into the Rockies, the Midwest, reform, and then... They all came across the Pacific and got about two-thirds of the way across and ran into a brick wall. Now, when I saw that happening, I've been watching the weather since I was a little kid. I started to collect satellite images of the eastern Pacific to watch what happened to these storms as they came across. And I posted it several times and updated it, and there was no question whatsoever that an enormous high pressure ridge was blocking, shredding, and destroying storm system after storm system after storm system. Now, they are trying, I guess now you told me, to explain this away somehow. It was so obvious and embarrassing. They, they didn't say anything for a long time. They tried to blame it on El Nino. No way. Doesn't happen. What's the, what's the latest on this? There was no El Nino, right? There was no... Well, this paper that came out, it's uh, in the Geophysical Research Letters Journal. It's been accepted. Uh, the lead scientist is Simon Wang of Utah State University. And he's basically saying that uh, uh, traceable anthropogenic warming footprint, well, that's the title, uh, is, uh, has caused this enormous intensity of this ridge throughout the winter of 2013-14. And this uh, is associated with the drought. And in other words, he's saying that there's an anthropogenic footprint here. In other words, global warming Absolutely ridiculous. the tropical Pacific is what caused this ridge, okay, to swell up and form. I mean, this is the first winter that it didn't rain in Seattle. You know, everyone knows you go to Seattle, it's dreary. It rains, okay? It didn't rain the other thing. Obviously, global warming had that caused all this heated water to rise from the Pacific, you would have massive floods in Seattle over this winter, correct? You bet. Correct? You bet. 
I mean, there is so many inconsistencies. These reports are being hurried out. You know, they're not really being... The peer review probably is just a rubber stamp. You know, when they hold on, it's about all the inconsistencies, all the contradictory bits of evidence here. They're just being brushed out. And then all the global warming, you know, the climate scientists are hailing this as yeah, the great new paper, although it's a very, very thin little paper, and most of it's speculative, hardly... And uh, it, it's trying to say that, well, the global warming has moved this grid steadily towards the northeast to uh, block out the low pressure fronts that's carrying all the moisture from uh, the Asia side of the Pacific. Yeah. This is patently ridiculous. You know, it just removed. You know, it just removed. It doesn't stand still because of a, uh, 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 you know, uplift from the, uh, 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 eastern, uh, from the eastern, eastern it's, Pacific, uh, from the, you know, California, Mexico side. It doesn't stand still. It just blows that away, okay? It just, it just pushes course. it right aside. You yeah. know, the cooler, denser air pushes away the lighter, warmer air. Am I not correct? The denser pushes away the lighter, you know? You got so it. This whole theory that the lighter air mass of warm air is holding back like you say, the whole Siberian high from bursting through the jet stream bursting is patent nonsense. And I hope people read, bother to read this uh, paper and see that it's nothing but apologetic for global warming theory. Now, know, are you working on a? Are you working on a paper? A you're, you're working on a paper yourself on this, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's complicated because there's these. I gotta, you know, I gotta defend against these two attacks. You know, these two extremely offensive papers, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it, which are generating a lot of excitement in the pro-global warming <laughs> circle. And I, and I, I like telling you before, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm not against the idea of global warming. I just don't think it's so dramatic. It's so sudden. You know, I, I, I kept saying before, it's, it's an issue over the next century. It's not an issue in our time immediately. I mean, uh, Fukushima has had a massive impact. And as you suggested here, there may be an element of uh, what's called geoengineering. I think geoengineering is sort of a bad word, but you know, it's, it's, but it's basically uh, that the weather systems over the Pacific were manipulated, as they could be, because of the highly radioactive nature of the uh, water pot particles coming from across from the whole Fukushima. Region. Well, let's let's, let's put it this way. Uh, after, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. After uh, almost three years. The amount of the Pacific Ocean that is heavily uh, radioactive now, which creates, feeds, and bolsters these storm systems, was, I think, producing yes. potential rainfall that would have been so embarrassing to NOAA and the EPA and everybody else that they had to do, they had right. to make a choice. Do we let these things come in and right. everybody with a radioactive detector can go out and start measuring rainwater and, and downspout right, right. water and all that? Or do we block them and create a drought? And I think they try, they opted to buy themselves time. I don't know what the hell for, but I think that's yeah. what happened. Next year, in a few weeks now, well, the yeah, yeah. entire you Pacific will be radioactive. They amount of radioactive rain coming, coming, coming down. They would rather it drop into the Pacific, right? Rather than over the Sierra Nevada. And the whole Central Valley there, and the exactly. whole, you know, Pacific Coast Range, which yeah. would have been disastrous. That would have had probably caused a, uh, a mass evacuation if that occurred. So would have been a total panic. Uh, the real estate market would have crashed. Uh, my my God, people would have been running for their literally running for their lives in some cases. The public would have not yeah, been able to handle it. The healthcare system, as everyone goes to the hospital as for checkups, would have been the end of healthcare. Yeah, I mean, the hospitals would have been jammed out know, across. Not just the western states; they would be fleeing all, uh, all, you know, away from the western. All yeah, well, yeah, across the country. How do they do this? Is the question. Yeah, I think it's hard to imagine how they did this. I mean, the existence of the harp system uh, outside of uh, uh, what's it, uh, the Fairbanks? What's the name of the city there? Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, that's well known by now. That you know they have uh, tried. Uh, they have tried and, uh, at times successfully. To manipulate the weather, and that's right outside of this harp area. So just a high altitude shot up to the ionosphere and back down. But the other thing is, everyone has been wondering what that mysterious Air Force mini shuttle has been doing up there for 400 days. Since you know, you know, I mean, you know, what what is the shuttle you know been doing up there? Very possibly, 
involved also in uh, very low intensity uh, laser sweep as it comes down, just to basically warm up uh, that cold front and just sort of dissipate it. Yeah. You know, sort of yeah. try to get that cold uh, uh, low front sort of basically back up on itself. It's sort of like throwing a wave back on itself, very possibly. This is very similar to the laser gun experiments that happened in Maydeck that led to the crash of the Columbia. You know, they changed the weather over the Middle East, so that was relatively cool when uh, uh, Allied troops invaded Iraq. There was snowfall in Israel right after that. Uh, huge water spouts uh, were generated off Cyprus that swept in where it did a lot of destruction there. People in Cyprus all uh, know that this was done by, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. by this uh, spaceship Columbia. And it changed it basically. So it is possible, using uh, not just one thing on, but a series of technology to hold back a massive front like that. It, does, it doesn't take much because in that water is so uh, radioactive. You know, it, it, it's highly ionized. In other words, it's carrying electrical charge. You know, uh, so it's very easy to manipulate something like that, something uh -huh. of that low density with electrical charge. So I think, you're, yeah, but what is amazing is that they'll roll out this study so prematurely. It usually takes years for these things to come out, right, to be peer-reviewed, that they rolled it out by what is this now, right? April? Yeah, I mean, March is already over, you know, the end of the season is already over. They roll this thing out so quickly because of what you've been pointing out. So, obviously, you, yeah, you hit them, you hit them where it hurts, you know, you pinch them where it hurts, and now they're trying to salve the wound and put everyone back to sleep. That uh, anyway, Air well Force... Done, well done, Jeff. You did a good job exposing this whole thing. I was exposing this thing, but unfortunately you cost the U.S. taxpayers millions of dollars to <laughs> try to rebut you. Uh, you know, <laughs> million dollar lies to rebut you. Yeah? Well, thank you. I was... Uh... It really bothered me looking looking at those satellite pictures when you see the, ge the geometry for God's sakes right angles on a high pressure system forget it yeah. uh, the x thirty seven b space plane by the way is nearing yeah. five hundred days in orbit now up there five hundred days and one story is asking will the x thirty seven b space plane ever come down uh well obviously it will at some point but it's been up there for a long time. It's the robot Air Force's yeah, robot obviously. space plane. Yeah. yeah. Well, this was originally a NASA project that the Air Force took over, so NASA still has sort of a hand. It. It's just the Air Force budget that I had. Well, I remember Na Na NASA. Na NASA is military. NASA is always military first. Yeah, Na that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of concern about the whole collapse of the weather system above the northern hemisphere, which has done massive damage to the American economy. Yeah. You know? not to mention destroyed hundreds of homes and you know, businesses and so on, is wrecking you know, North America. So it is obviously an issue. Certainly the Central Intelligence Agency would certainly be very worried about because their global warming theory isn't panning out. Something completely different, something grotesque is happening here that caught them, you know, knocked them sideways, and they're just trying to react, and they're using global warming as kind of a cover. They're just using that as a... I don't think they believe it anymore, you know, because temperatures haven't been rising that, that steadily anymore. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, UN panel is pretty much discredited right now. There's, uh, you know, even one of the members of the panel, scientists, quit because there's nothing but exaggeration of the negative effects here. So that whole theory is collapsing, but, so therefore it's only used now as sort of like a, uh, curtain to hide the truth here, you know? So. So basically, okay, let's look at the two competing theories here. One is from the University of Utah and NOAA, which says that this warm weather, this coming, they can't even point to an El Nino. They say this coming, now, now, this El Nino to come, as if the El Nino can uh, act from you know, on some spiritual level from the deep bottom of the ocean. Now, this is insane. If there's, there's either El Nino or there's not. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. not an approaching possible, uh, you know, El Nino, the spirit of El Nino to come. It's not a zeitgeist. I mean, this is ridiculous, okay? This is so unscientific claptrap, okay? That's, that's causing the big bend in the jet stream. Now, if you look at the map in this re report, which I'll, I'll include in my article, you will see that this warm area of high pressure, warm, very warm temperature high, runs from Southern California up the Pacific Coast, 
across to Western Canada and across Canada over Greenland. And this, these are exactly the areas that were massively clobbered in the uh, third week in late March of 2011 uh, by the Fukushima releases, which just stunned everybody at how swift they came across the Pacific and how forceful, I mean, what high levels of radiation they dropped all over that area. So very coincidentally, we see not a jet stream with a normal sine curve. We see a jet stream that's been broken, okay, uh, across uh, uh, Canada, okay, across Canada, the jet stream has been broken, okay, uh, it's been sort of reached by this uh, whole Fukushima plume that came across. And the whole point is, is that that is when this Arctic ozone hole, when uh, scientists in Norway and Japan, they, they, uh, they lifted off these balloons, they found a noticeable decline in the ozone hole, in the ozone layer over the Arctic, okay? So the radioactive compound, no doubt scientifically, they decided to do destroy ozone, uh, ozone. They, they're ozone destroying. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. Therefore, we see, and there's a paper written before that, a year, uh, uh, a few months in January by the Alfred Wegener Institute in Potsdam, okay, which says that the Arctic, the gradual warming of the Arctic, I mean, no one, no one, you know, um, no one's denying the fact that the Arctic has, the Arctic region has, the Arctic Circle has been gradually uh, warming up, but Certainly nobody suggested all the Arctic ice would break apart in March and April 2011, that the ice sheet over uh, Greenland will melt away at that same time, that, you know, there would be this catastrophic change in the Arctic. And so they said, well, the minor changes in the Arctic ice sheet do have this effect on the entire jet stream, on the, all the, they call it the barometric, two barometric pressure differences across the whole northern hemisphere, okay, all the air currents across the entire. This is written before Fukushima, and certainly since then, this massive catastrophic change since March, when uh-huh. you know, since March, yeah. when Fukushima went up, there has been catastrophic change in the weather system, and this is most notable over North America, especially the United States, right, uh, where you see, uh, yeah, you know, the the, the uh, this vortex, you know, this uh, uh, Arctic vortex uh, forming, and we've seen all these wild weather effects and I said, just uh, you know, unprecedented rampaging destruction of weather systems, Indeed. tornadoes, all right. and storms. Okay. Uh, Hold on, uh, Yochi, just for a couple minutes. We have to take a break. We'll be right back. Yochi yeah. Shimatsu, and our conversation mm-hmm. continues. Meanwhile, a top nuclear official is admitting now that the ground which we've been telling you for over two years now, the ground beneath Fukushima reactor buildings is sinking. Just like we've told you. Same old, same old. You hear it here first. We'll be right back. Okay, and back with all of you good folks. Uh, This uh, funny thing about the ground sinking there, it's, it's already so soggy now. They say you can stick a shovel in many areas and turn one shovel full over and you'll see groundwater. Uh, this, of course, is because of the underground aquifer being impeded on its way to the ocean. It's backed up. And the big plan was to start in June to build the ice wall, which would have blocked the entire outflow. Or, of course, it would have gone around it eventually. But And what would have happened uh, to that water? It would have rebounded right back into Fukushima Daiichi, and those buildings would have probably started to sink like the setting sun. Uh, it would have been a disaster. Uh, so now the uh, Japan NRA is, is, is having uh, second thoughts, and they're saying they're very concerned about the risk of the groundwater uh, backing up and everything sinking. Well, welcome to the real world, folks. It's about time. Go ahead, Yoshi. Yeah, this, this ice wall was just a really bad idea. I mean, you know, as you know, anyone who's gone skating, uh, skating on a pond in winter, a natural pond, there's, uh, you can see water underneath your feet there, you know, underneath your, uh, your skate. It's not like the ice wall would have stopped the water or frozen the entire plant, uh, plant area. Stopped. There would still be massive amounts of water flowing in and around the thing. And sure. working through underneath. Basically, it would just drive down the water further deeper to find new channels and, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, the water would flow 
it'll be a multi-billion dollar waste of money, and then it'll be even more difficult to blow the new channels way down below. You know, that open up the new tunnels at the water. You know, water looks for uh, an escape out. That, that's well, water, water is a heavyweight the champion. Science, it'll, right? it'll, yeah, water will not be denied. It will go <laughs> under, good. around, or yeah, over. I, I just, yeah, exactly. I, I just fixed the, the bottom of my bathroom sink. And I put, you know, all kinds of sealants and all that. And when I turned it on, guess what? It starts dripping, okay? That's water for you. You know, it just, no matter what you do, it finds a way somehow. You know, so, right. Uh, you know, it's the most insidious stuff to, to penetrate. And so, therefore, the idea just basically, fundamentally, was, and it's not really clear why you would build an ice wall, because it wouldn't contain anything. You know, water would just flow out in another direction. It'd back it up, as you said and make the situation far worse, the whole area more radioactive. There's certainly no solution. The solution is to find a way to remove the radioactive fuel out of the reactors and the spent fuel pool. That's the solution that they feel. Uh, you know, the ice wall is just a diversion. It would have been a billion-dollar diversion and a waste of time from the main job at hand. Is how do you get the fuel out of melted-down reactor cores? And out of the ground, yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, there's nothing inside the reactor. Some of these reactors, like reactor three, apparently, uh, and reactor two, seems everything just escaped out. So how do you remove that fuel is the question, or contain that fuel in, uh, some, uh, chemically contain it somehow. That is the question. Basically, put a ra- uh, radiation shield around that thing. Uh, concrete won't do, the uh, radiation, oh, crap, right, too. So it takes a more sophisticated type of technology. To, uh, do the bonding. I've suggested borax all along. Borax crystallized wonderful stuff, you know, amazing sure. uh, stuff. That yeah. would do the job. But they, you know, they're not going to attempt something out of the box. They're going to look for engineering solutions rather than science solutions. And I think that's really at the fundamental problem of the outlook of these people. That, you know, there used to be a thing called scientists, but right now everyone is into technology. Now, how to do something rather than what is that something? What is its nature? Yeah. How do we understand how it works? How do we get it to work in a way uh, that it wants to, in a way that benefits us? That's science, right? Science is the understanding the processes uh, uh, behind uh, things, behind the uh, behind, yeah, in, uh, in, in the chemical elements, in the atomic structure of things. Where technology is just uh, the application, the use of it. I'm afraid. This whole process has been just engineered into a total mess right now. Everything they've tried has not just failed. It's made the situation a lot worse. And, uh, the it idea is just a, just a, yeah. an example of a, a gigantic boondoggle of design that some company cooked up and made probably a lot of money from, you know, in, uh, subcontracts. And then it doesn't, it's not going to happen. It's been a total waste of time and energy as, uh, and again, you know, June is too late anyway because June is when the rainy season begins. They're not going to be able to freeze anything because that's very warm, hot water coming off the mountain. Uh, and it's radioactive, so it's going to be superheated water coming off uh, the Abitimo Mountain. So, uh, you know, even your construction schedule makes no sense. You know, if you're going to do an ice wall, you do it in the middle of winter. You, know, you don't do it <laughs> at the start of the summer rainy season. So, just these people are sort of out of touch with basic out of touch with nature, you know, this is what got them there. They, they just lost track of the natural world. It's been pretty good to humanity overall, you know, over the past millennia. They, they just completely divorced from that. Live in a little box, you know, inside their little drawings. Uh, very bad well, we, situation. We, we keep getting... Fukushima, by all accounts, you know, radiation levels are up, by all accounts. Yeah. Up everywhere, all accounts. The, the graph keeps going oh. up. Every oh. graph you look at, you're right. Now, the other thing yeah. is that uh, what we have are, are report after report of people who are get, getting, well, mostly workers from the plant, who say that TEPCO is clueless, the situation is worsening every day, they're afraid for their own safety, well, obviously most of them are doomed, but they, don't, they say TEPCO doesn't have a plan, they don't have a clue, and things are, are getting worse and worse and worse. And then I had another story today about young children in cities in Fukushima Prefecture, young children now who are dying of heart attacks, or what we'd call heart attacks, heart episode, heart heart failure, 
all kinds of things clearly related to the radioactivity. That the government is forcing these people to move back home. They will. They have been lying since day yeah. one, and they're not going to quit lying about the exposure rates. It, 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 it's genocide is what it is, and it's. It, I, I just can't believe these people are... They grumble, but they go back. Yeah, they this is that, and then they're surprised when one of their, uh, you know, family members dies like that. And then uh, I told you, I did talk, talk with that cardiologist a long ago, a couple of years ago, who said that the heart is extremely vulnerable to see him in your diet. And, uh, and especially the heart size is the whole issue. If you have a smaller heart than a normal like children would have, much more probability you're going to have suffer heart failure. And it's very unusual for children to suffer heart failure. Very heart unusual. Like but yeah. when you say I'm exercising outdoors, like immediately after, as I did, you know, as I told you, I, I believe I, yeah. I don't know if I got shot photos. Yep, 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 yep. Outdoors, on mandatory school exercises outdoors, you know they were doing you know, I mean, the, the, right. the Ministry of Education has done a lot of bad things, but that, that is like criminal. Well, they're killing their children. Hold on a minute. We'll come right back uh, with Yochi. Okay. Uh, things are just getting worse and worse over there, as we, as we told you they would. All right. We'll be back. Okay, and we're back. Uh, if you look at the top of the center column... You'll see the third story down under the latest Fukushima updates. Radiation killing Japan's children. Terrible things are going on. This is a former official uh, saying this. Let me read just a little bit of this to you. The former mayor of, uh, how do you pronounce F-U-T-A-B-A? Futaba? Futaba. Futaba in Fukushima Prefecture. Uh, The former mayor now of this city. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said there. Uh, he said a number of things. He said there are still about two million people living in the prefecture. We have all sorts of medical issues. Uh-huh. This is a former mayor talking. He said the authorities claim this has nothing to do with the radiation fallout from Fukushima Daiichi. I demanded, said the former mayor, that the authorities substantiate their claim in writing, but they ignored my request. There are some terrible things going on in Fukushima Prefecture. The biggest problem is that there is no one to help us. What he's saying here is that the government has abandoned them to die. I talked to local authorities in different places in Fukushima, but no one would listen to me. They believe what the government says. Well, in reality, radiation is still there, and it is killing children. They are dying of heart conditions, asthma, leukemia, thyroid complications, Lots of kids are extremely exhausted after school. Others are simply unable to attend physical education classes. But the authorities are still hiding the truth from us, and I don't know why. Don't they have any children of their own? It hurts so much to know they cannot do anything to protect our children. So said the former mayor of uh, Futaba. Uh, Just sickening, sickening what that uh, Abe government has done. Well, the authorities do have children, but their children are living in places like Shanghai, Bangkok, Los Angeles, you know? Uh, oh, Paris. yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, I mean, yeah. you know, they, they took their children out. They didn't apply as they leave those who, the rest of the country there, to, uh, you know, basically become a dead gene pool. You know, basically, uh, the children who are not dying immediately, well, um, I don't think they'll ever be able to have children without, you know, uh, fast mutation, you know, trying to destroy chromosomes and embryos. As we heard from uh, doctors who, you know, let's say from patients of doctors who treated young women in Hong Kong, who did there just for less than a week, who suffered uh, monstrous, you know, uh, a, a miscarriage, a monstrous abortion, you know, of aborted in, uh, embryos. Now, we're, we're uh, I see what, that, that's we're, being we're hushed up. We're talking about total destruction. If these kids actually do yeah. survive, they're not yeah. going to be able to have children. They're, they're mm-hmm. mutated by now. They're gone. That's and, right. So, no, I agree. Too late to save them. Yeah, we're not, we're not hearing anything about... The government about, knows that. We're not hearing anything about mutations. Well, the problem is... Nothing. Yeah. Well, the problem is, if doctors in Japan do reveal any kind of sensitive information like that, they basically get ostracized by the medical community. You know, and that's why 
I've been able to talk to just one cardiologist off the record, okay? And, uh, you know, he's whispering in me and just, just totally off the record, you know? The situation is bad. This is a couple of years ago. Now, doctors still haven't broken ranks yet. I mean, there's a lot of nurses and doctors who have left for the chemo. They've just given up. They just realized it's pointless. Okay, so the number of medical personnel in the province is declining. These people are just abandoned. Well, the situation is far worse than Chernobyl or ever was. Chernobyl was evacuated. I mean, well, there's no comparison. You know, another uh, another yeah, thing, no Yochi. Yeah, we have no idea. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, you know what else we have no idea about? We don't know how much, on a percentage basis, of the sea life in the North Pacific is now dead. We do know that the sardine fleets from Alaska all the way to Mexico didn't catch one fish. They used to net them up by the countless tons. They're gone. We don't know how dead yeah. the Pacific is. We have the yachtsmen who sail from Osaka to San Francisco over 4,000 miles. Yeah. He saw yeah. exactly two fish, one bird, and one whale with a tumor on yeah. its head. That's it. That's all he saw. The yeah. North Pacific yeah, could yeah. be well, dead. Yeah, this cannot, it cannot be a virus because, you know, like, again, I talked to California no virus. fish and wildlife officer, and say, there's plenty of fish down by, you know, in, down by Mexico. There's no shortage of In other words, it's across the North Pacific. It's, it's down in San Francisco, uh, you know, the, it's, it's creeping down the California coast. That's where the kill offs are coming from. In other words, if it had been a virus, you know, it would have been the warmer water fish that would have been totally wiped out. But no, there's still plenty of fish down there because the radiation levels are still relatively low down there. But again, the California current is working its way south. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's insinuating itself into the warmer water. So we would expect to off down the road there. And I think right. all the animal rescue centers do, are quite aware of the impact on marine mammals, record numbers of deaths and, uh, both adults and pups. Less effective because they don't go out so far in the current. You know, they stay in the close to the inshore waters. But the adults certainly are just getting clobbered. And they are taking finally uh, radiation measurements, but no one's released them yet. I think. I think you know. The, uh, you know the, the understanding is just keep this under observation for now. So a lot of people are watching, and there's there. I think there's a there's alarm out there, but because no one knows what to do about radiation, you know, people aren't, you know, just running out of their doors screaming their heads off, you know, which maybe they feel like doing, but can't do because they're just trying to figure out, we can't figure out what to do here, we can't figure out what to do. Terrible situation, and there's got to be better monitoring, obviously, especially among populations who eat a lot of fish. Well, the problem is not the fish who died off, the kill off, the problem is the fish that are still living, how do contaminated or being eaten by marine mammals, by you know, uh, let's say uh, uh, animals like the polar bears and uh, uh, grizzly bears who depend on the seafood for their protein, that's going to work its way in food chain. Not to mention the human population. They eat a lot of fish along the West Coast, too. You know, this, this is the real concern. It's not so much the kill off, it's the fact that it's working its way up the food chain, killing everything. You know? Absolutely, it's, 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 yeah. It's killing everything. We, we just, like I say, killing things on land. Huh? We don't know how dead the Pacific is. I no one's given me any data. I have seen nothing. I mean that it could be catastrophic yeah. already. We don't know. No one's well, saying anything. Uh, obviously, obviously the federal government, the agencies know. Uh, oh, they know. And, uh, are paying huge amounts of money. I mean, billions, perhaps hundreds of billions of dollars for this cover-up. You know, the, the American government money, which could be better used in public education. In, in terms of even to radiation in your environment, in your diet. Use a right. simple booklet like that. It costs only a few million dollars to distribute to every family along the West Coast. But rather, they rather spend billions to hide the truth from everybody, the immediate, you know, the, the, the immediate and present danger to their families, to their, my God, to their pets even, you know, to everything, you know, right, you know along the whole, you know, to everything around them, every uh, uh, living species around them, massive threat. The government is doing quite the opposite, and this is really shameful. And we got to question uh, President Obama's connection to General Electric. We got to question the Department of Energy. I mean, there's just fundamental questions that have to be asked and, uh, about 
who really controls the American government? Is this a, you know, a government for its people or against its people? Right now, it's acting against its people in the best British red coat tradition of trying to discriminate Americans, you know? uh, rather than trying to save their lives and, and uh, protect their security. And this is really, I don't know, it's shameful that this is happening. And, uh, you know, there's, there's this whole theory, this whole, these millions of dollars on these rushed out reports to reassure us everything's okay. This is caused by CFC, uh, you know, the Arctic uh, ozone layer is gone because of CFC. But on the other hand, the whole situation in Antarctica is better because there's no more CFC. I mean, this double speak <laughs> is so blatantly yeah, obvious. Yeah, yeah, and these yeah. are, we're talking about MIT, okay? Atmospheric studies at MIT just rushed out a paper on this. And they're, they're stumbling on their own words. They're saying, you know, speaking out both sides of their mouth. Incredible. And, you know, MIT, I, th- I think, you know, given all the problems that have happened there, including the uh, that related death of young hacker there, you know, uh, uh, who was involved there and hacking the place for some obvious reasons that have just complete unethical things going on at MIT, that the American scientific establishment has just completely spreaded itself. Uh, you know, I mean, the Europeans do also believe in this global warming theory, but it's more gradualist and so on. And uh, can I tell you just a little aside here on Alfred Wegener, this uh, institute that came out with that report. Uh, do you know anything about him, Alfred Wegener? The Stra- polar explorer? No. He died in Greenland, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, he was the one who... Uh, he was the inventor of tectonic theory, basically uh, uh, the continental drift. Okay, you know, he was the first person, he's German. He okay, first, I remember uh, the name Soviet. now. All right, got it. Wegener, yeah. Now, his daughter, Lottie Wegener, she married Heinrich R., you know, the seven years in Tibet, the first uh, young lad to climb the Eiger, you know, the uh, north face of the Eiger, culture boy for the Nazi party and all that. Wegener, uh-huh. uh... You know, in science, there's always an occult dimension. The many, many scientists by Newton were occultists. Wegener also, he believed in Ultima Thule, his underground civilization below the, uh, below the, uh, the the planet's core. And that's one of the reasons he went to Greenland to search for the, uh, entrance to Ultima Thule. Never came back. So when I flew over, uh, Greenland, I had to have a toast to the praise this crazy chill physicist, you know, amazing story. Uh, great explorer. Yeah, it really is, yeah. Now, uh, Yochi, when the so-called plume, uh, i.e. the entire North Pacific, the radiation, when it hits the Pacific coast, which can be weeks away now, they don't know, it's it's getting here. Uh, are you going to come back and do uh, more research up and down the West Coast? Are you planning on yeah, that? Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to do, yeah, because we've got to make a much more concerted effort, hope to get out a booklet for residents, at least online. Yeah, because you know, if, without, out, yeah, so. without that so kind of an effort. Time, it's time to take this, uh, this phase more seriously. There's not much we can do for Japan, you know? Not much can be left. The situation is so badly uh, manipulated, mismanaged, right. that those poor people are just the uh, walking dead, essentially. Uh, so you got to save the living at this point, those who have a chance. Well, no. that's that's my idea. My hope that's is that uh, maybe maybe you can come over. We can work something up, put it online, a booklet for everyone online yeah. uh, guidelines. Yeah, the things Pacific to do. Northwest is definitely the yeah. bearing, it's going to bear the brunt. So you know, right yep. in your area. So we All right. will we'll okay. have to deal with that because uh, it's, it's incoming. It's incoming, and sad, unless we just have to hope the American people don't go the way the Japanese dying off like oh. this. I mean, this is you know like gas people. This, yeah. this is just. Well, there's, there's going to be some inertia to keep things as they are. The real estate people are going to want to say everything's just fine. Uh, you know the game, the tourism, yeah. the resorts, all that. So anyway, I'll uh, yeah. I'll be here to help if you come over. We're going to do it. We're going to work on it. David, Very good. Uh, my Very guy good. in the Bay Area, uh, we're putting up stations. And Okay. All right. Talk to you next week. Thanks much. Great. All right. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yoshi Shimatsu. And uh, that's our program. Tonight, Monday, off to a roaring start, and we'll be back with you in 21 hours, and we'll keep it up tomorrow night. Hope you have a good day. Take care. Oh, yeah. Go on. Click the subscribe button. Uh, We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger 
and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.